that I have called to them. You see, this house of prayer, this community built together in love, joined together, fasting, ministering to the Lord, and looking for the direct intervention and government of the Holy Spirit. When that comes, then suddenly bones begin to rattle, apostles are released, and the whole Gentile world is released and opened up to the apostolic movement. Antioch again. I remember when we moved to Pasadena to launch a, prayer, a, a, launch a church. We had a vision of, of, of a great revival coming. And we went to Pasadena. We prayed. And I remember on the sidewalk where I lived, the Lord just began to speak to me. And he said, Lou, pray that your church would be Antioch again. So I brought this message to our church. And for years, this became the defining prayer. God, make us an Antioch. That fasting, ministering the Lord, joined together in union, would release missionaries that would go to the places that had never been opened. And we prayed for the hidden people groups. This was our dream, right? This is what we And we, we, we prayed for Antioch again. Jerusalem got all settled down in its own city, all in Rome. Jesus had said to them, you will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, but they didn't go beyond Jerusalem. And so, God has to set something up to get them out of Jerusalem, and so he sets up the martyrdom of Philip, and the martyrdom of Philip scatters the church, and they go to Antioch and other places, and then they start preaching, shattering the gospel to a group of Greeks in Antioch, and it says, suddenly, the hand of the Lord comes upon them, and many people are being saved. Folks, God seems to anoint when you go beyond your boundaries. God's looking for a people that will go from away from their safety zones and step across boundaries. And they go to Antioch, and Antioch becomes the capital. It moved from Jerusalem to Antioch. I want to tell you, God is going to raise up Antioch again. And so we sent our first team to the Philippines, and it blew up, and everything blew up. Our church blew up and everything. The dreams were shattered. And I remember years went by. One day I was with, in this mud auditorium named after John Armand, the student missions movement. And I was there in that old auditorium, and I had a vision of that auditorium filled with 3,000 kids with tears streaming down their eyes. And I'm weeping as I'm so filled with this vision. And, and I said, what is this, Lord? And he says, this is John R. Mott Auditorium. And this man who God was going to release out of day and night worship, he was going to release a mission, student missions movement from America again. That day I went, I walked out of the Mont Auditorium and I said, God, give me this campus for a student missions movement. I went over to my pastor's office. I was talking with him and out of the blue, he says, you know what? Antioch again still lives in my heart. I said, oh, I told him my vision. That night I went to a vineyard out in Glendale. This one pastor, I met him one time. What can this meeting? There are these prophets come from Florida. They're prophesying over people. And they call me out. And this is what the prophet said. The prophet says, The Lord says that I will restore Antioch again. And where Jerusalem shut down the missions movement, I will change my capital to Antioch. And I will once again send mission to the nations of the earth. I gotta tell you, I feel like I'm in the fulfillment of this movement with the Act School, with the dream of the New England Ivy League schools and the Student Volunteer Missions Movement. I feel that I am standing at the beginnings yet of something that God said, I'm going to release Antioch again. A house of prayer, fasting and ministry, built together in relationship, agreeing together that whole countries will come and open up to the breast of the brightest out of New England as we send another wave of 
27, and told them by revelation that they would run into a man named Christian Winter. They go to the mining place there in Germany, Czechoslovakia. They go there, and God comes to greet them, and they tell them, my name's Christian Winter. And he gave them the keys, he said 37 on the key, to the compound where the ancient 